I'm getting there. <laughs> and then transcribe, live transcript. Okay, there you go. All, All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hey everyone, this is Chaos Weekly Community Call. I'm Elizabeth, the Chaos Community Manager, and we're really happy that you're here. We always like to have everybody put their names in the agenda here. Thank you, Matt, for sharing your screen. Um, if you don't want to do that, that's cool, but it'd be great if you did. Uh, I will also. I don't have a tip yet. I have to think about that. Oh, I like these. These are great. Train your dog to love when the mail is delivered. Yeah. <laughs> is that one you for it? I thought he may actually love it. Actually, he may actually love it. He may love <laughs> barking. It may feel super good. So I... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's barking from joy, not as Oh, a... <laughs> so good. <laughs> a good work chair. Yeah, that's a good one. Not waiting around, making time for workouts. Yes, movement is a big deal because I'll just sit in this dang chair all day. So that's a good one. Soundproofing also is a good tip. If you're able to do it. Yeah. Uh, even before the bunker, I had soundproofed the basement. So would you just put like panels up or how how would you mean? No, that? I had my basement remodeled like seven years ago. And nice. when they did it, I had them blow a 60 decibel noise insulation. Nice. Up, up in there. Yeah. You can just scream in angst to know well, it can it's not hear. perfect, but I can send the children downstairs <laughs> and they can scream and thank you. Got you. Hear them as clearly. Yeah, and you, you don't have to train your dog. <laughs> no, my, right. my dog doesn't. If my dog barks, there's a problem. Like, my dog barks at nobody unless there's an actual problem. Mine, mine bark at a lot of things. Any noise, that, yeah, that they're not sure of, yeah. I also hear them. My I live in soybean. I have soybean fields behind my house all around. And it's harvest day, apparently. I can hear them, so they might get louder. Apologies if that happens. It's a, it's a work at home from Ohio kind of day. Yeah. <laughs> Ohio problems. But anyway, okay, we could actually talk about meeting stuff. Sorry, y'all. Um, that was fun, though. Okay, so the first one um, is to talk about this marketing and communications working group. We are working on a charter that will kick this group off. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if, I don't think Georg is on here and Benny is not on here either. And I think last meeting, Georg was going to take this doc and kind of go through it, look at some of the suggestions and comments and clean it up a little bit. So we might need to do a little more of that um, before we can move it forward, I think. What do you all think? Have you taken a look at it at all, Elizabeth? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I added all of that. Um, this is you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you like give an overview of kind of where this seems to be heading? Sure. Yeah. So, <clears throat> sorry. We realize like we have all these little pieces of chaos stuff. A lot of stuff is happening in chaos. We have a lot of moving parts, and we have people working on different um, ways to communicate that. So, for instance, I do the newsletter. Someone else does. You know, Georg does the podcast, and Venya helps with the podcast. Sean too. Um, Ruth also helps with Twitter and other things. So. It was kind of a way to bring all of these pieces together from a communication standpoint and have more of a unified team working on like a unified message, a unified branding, all of that, that kind of stuff. So okay. right now we're trying to figure out what the different roles are in this team, um, because you can look at it a few different ways. So you could look at it as like a community management um, lens or you could look at it as a marketing lens or um, just a communications lens so there's a bunch of different uh, ways to look at this so right now we're trying to define what exactly this team will work on what they're responsible for what they're not responsible for and uh, kind of who's doing what we have modeled this after the kubernetes um, marketing and communications team how they work so we that was kind of the basis for the doc, and then we're tweaking it to fit our needs a little bit better. So that's where we are. Okay. So like, would this would this group meet regularly? Is it a working group, 
I mean, it says right I think it right. will be. Um, okay. I think Georg's preference was to meet asynchronously just on Slack or wherever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Maybe at the beginning have a few regular meetings to kind of nail everything down and get it going. But I don't think the goal is to add another meeting to okay. the chaos group. I think that okay. was the, the goal. Okay. I, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's a, that's a sound goal. I, I do think meeting together a few times at the kickoff will be helpful for building a shared understanding. This document seems pretty mature to me right now as I look at it. Yeah, I think there's just a few loose ends around um, the, the scope, but I know that's something yeah. that we want to try is um, doing like a content calendar, for instance, so that we would be a little more coordinated with, you know, how we're producing content and um, give people an opportunity to also contribute to that. Because right now, like to write a blog post, there, there really just really isn't like a great process for that. And there's no calendar or like idea generator or anything like that. So somebody would have to just have an idea, write a blog post, and then we would figure out how to get it on the website. So this is aimed to kind of, I think, make it also easier for people to contribute um, through the creation and curating of content. And also help our the people using our metrics to understand how these metrics are being used in the real world. And also, of course, to communicate what the project is working on um, at a, in a timely way. So all of those kind of goals, okay. if that makes sense. It does. Okay, so I guess this is just continued, like it'll just be cleaned up, maybe mm -hmm. this document yeah. and then, okay. Yeah, I think it's almost there, like Sean said. Um, there's just a few comments and things to kind of sort out. So maybe those would even be sorted out in that first few meetings of just, you know, making sure that we under, everybody's on the same page with regard to what this group is actually doing and not doing. Okay. Is the do you think there's an intention to continue to have a variety of different people manage the channels? I think so. Um, okay. If you scroll down, you can see the different roles. So oh, go back up a little. Well, yeah, there is that. There's also like a what was that table? That was like what's in scope and what's out of scope. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, if you go down to the communication roles, so um, these are some of the roles that we were we had ideas for. So yeah, like like contributors, um, content curation leads. So okay. we would maybe have like one person that would like lead the team or, you know, a, a few people that would lead the team and keep everybody on the same page, but then really have it open for a lot of contributions. Okay. I think the idea was also to have a, a shadow person for each of these roles. Yeah. Okay. Just in case somebody steps aside or something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I would point out that the uh, the number of roles and requiring shadow people this this does make this group rather large. So that it'll be interesting to see if we can fill it out. Uh, and that's not biggest, a, that's not a critique. I'm just I'm just curious if we'll be able to fill it out. The biggest benefit to having shadows. I mean, yes, if someone steps down, that's a benefit. But it's actually a really good growth opportunity for someone who wouldn't know how to do this role by themselves. Mm -hmm. but could help someone else do the, do the role. So it's a really good opportunity for somebody who wants to learn a new skill. Okay. And personally, <clears throat> I kind of like the idea of just having like a partner with stuff because it's great to like bounce ideas off someone else, you know? And so um, I think that that's also another benefit. And again, this was based on yeah. um, kind of the Kubernetes model of what roles. So this might change as we go. I mean, we're just kind of, starting from somewhere. So it's just like an initial thing, I think. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, we've kind of gotten to the stage where communication outside the project is becoming more central to things that need to be done. So I think this is a good time to have this group organized. And I think too, like the, you know, people are starting to look more to the chaos uh, as as leaders in the space, I think, honestly, like we yep. get a lot of questions, we get a lot of people looking for advice or experience or um, information. So I think that having this team in place as we grow uh, is, a, is a really good, a good thing for the future of chaos also. Mm -hmm. Okay, I agree. Cool. 
All right, any other questions or comments about that team? We'll bring it up again next week. Maybe when Georg's here, Avenia. Okay, yeah. let's go on. Uh, the next one is just a reminder, please take your this survey. We really, really appreciate those who have taken it already. If you started it, make sure you go back and finish it. Um, we are really looking forward to seeing what how we can be better as a community, how we can be more welcoming and inclusive. And we really just want your feedback. So please um, take, a, take a few minutes and click on that link. Maybe not right this second, but after the meeting. <laughs> Or you can do it now, I guess. That's fine. Um, <laughs> maybe we should just do that, like set aside time, everyone take it now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but it will be open until October 12th. So uh, you do have a little bit of time, but better better now than, than later. So we would love, love your experience if you have a moment. And it is completely anonymous. So we really encourage you to be absolutely honest with us and give your heartfelt feelings and thoughts to us because um, it will be anonymous. So say what you say what you mean, say what you think. Any questions about that? Not for me. All right. Oh. No, not for me. I not for me. Oh, not okay. zero okay. questions. <laughs> okay. I was like, you just oh, no, encourage me to not talk. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, the next one is just looking for an update from Anita. If you have one, great. If you don't, that's also completely valid. Um, just wanted to let, give you that space if you um, do have something to chat with the community about. Oh yeah, sure. Um, hey everyone. So um, this is the last I actually talked about this project. I've um, I've worked with um, Armstrong and Math to make sure that the um, IRB process is in place because we have to do that before we can release the links. I've curated the questions. The link is down there. That's what the, the survey itself looks like. But I want to be sure that this is approved before I can start sharing it out to people. So that's the, the stage I am at the, with the survey. You can also check out the survey. If you notice anything, you can always drop in it. A comment and I think I have abilities to still edit it as of now so you can also check it out but that is what our survey is going to look like by the time we are ready to share it out I have so, a quick question oh sorry um I just was going to say for those who maybe aren't familiar with the IRB process does someone want to explain what that means and what that is it's just yeah in large part it's just an ethics check on the questions that are being asked and the processes by which we recruit individuals. Um, it also ensures just, a basic insurance. We bas it basically ensures that we have considered all the ethical things related to gathering data from people in this way and that our institutions, in my case, a university, have, have done some review to say, yeah, you've thought about all the things you need to think about for this population. So it's, it's really about informant confidentiality and comfort. And so Anita, I did just hear back from the IRB today, like five minutes before this meeting. So I don't know what they said. Awesome. <laughs> so they probably are asking for some small change, but they're, okay. I'll make that change. What I don't even know what it is, but that's usually how it works. <laughs> the IRB. So I'll make that change. And we should, I'm guessing we'll hear back in just a few days. And this, this survey would be covered under the IRB I created as well. So we're covered doubly. Okay. I, uh, I talked to uh, Nikki Stevens from Open Demographics uh, yep. last week. Uh, and she's, she's off, or they, they have offered to uh, come in and, and provide some feedback on the uh, interview questions and survey questions. Uh, so they are planning on attending the DEI meeting this week, I believe. Okay. So if, if feedback is desired, uh, that would be the opportunity. Great. So awesome. will you be there, Anita? Yes, I'll definitely be there. I'm looking forward to that. All right. Um, and thanks, Kevin. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. No problem.
Any other questions about this project? Okay, we can go forward then. Um, let's see, Chaos Africa update. I want to give Ruth a, an opportunity to share what's going on with Chaos Africa because there's some really exciting things. So take it away, Ruth. Yeah, okay. Um, we've been, so a lot of things have been happening lately. Um, you know, we have had like a lot of newcomers coming to the project, um, which Elizabeth and I are kind of like planning an onboarding meeting um monthly onboarding meeting but um for we've been planning um participating in Hacktober Fest um which um the planning has already started so um I think yesterday I was kind of like looking through the recap of Hacktober Fest for last year and the stats were not like African representation like they were not from um completed registered users there were no like african countries so i was like it also links back to our go for chaos africa to like find the um, challenges and that africans face when they contribute to open source and also try to solve those challenges so the the planning for october first um generated from that um external focus would be like educating um people like our Twitter audience and people that follow the Twitter, um, the Chaos Africa Twitter about Hacktober Fest, you know, how they can participate and how they can get their first contributor, like three topics there on three different, um, three different events, um, how they can participate and how they can also contribute to Hacktober Fest, to open source rather after Hacktober Fest. So that's for like the external focus for the audience then internally um we're also looking at also participating in october first um some projects um using some projects in chaos um where existing or new community members in chaos can participate in these different um projects and you know get their PRs merged so these are this is a list of um things that I thought about for the chaos slack bots, um, we have the documentation for that bots on Google Docs. So the idea is moving it to GitHub Wiki because um, we can we can have it's more it's more visible on GitHub Wiki than on Google Docs. So initially, Imde and um, Precious have the documentation for the bots on um, Google Docs, but we can move it to GitHub Wiki, and it's a good way for people to uh, we could create issues and uh, you know that people can participate with um as regards to documentation then other things um for the bots is also say for example we have a a feature on the bot that sends a dm a site-wide dm or you know sends reminders to channels because most of the time on the chaos africa channel i usually have to send send reminders for like meetings um you know important update so we can have features where the bots would do that so that can also serve as issues that um, existing community members can work on um then the badging bot enoch had put out like a list of issues a, little, a list of features that people can work on i think on the on the project board so those are things that people can work on as well. So the, the entire aim of that section of the internal focus is to find things that people can contribute to um, or find issues or um, small changes that people can make um, in the chaos projects. Um, I saw Elizabeth put in like a, about the thumbnails. So that's something that people, designers can also participate with. And for, so the question now is, um, okay, before I go to that question, um, this year, Hacktoberfest is trying to also encourage non-code contributions um, because usually it's also always with the PR. So they are encouraging non-code contributions. So I was thinking about how can we, how can um, non-code contributions be recorded in, say for example, someone makes a design thumbnail, how do they, you know, um, submit that contribution to October first because usually you must use a PR or an MR. So um, I 
I asked some questions and, you know, someone recommended using an activity log to kind of track these kind of contributions. Um, so say, for example, and, and on the long run, I think it's sustainable, especially for like people that make non-code contributions um, to chaos, right? Having like a, a no-code activity log. So the activity log would look like a table that has like, you know, the um, the contributor's name and the kind of contribution they made. So in, in terms of Oktoberfest, they can make a PR to that uh, MD file and, you know, submit that PR as part of their contribution. Um, and the PR they're submitting is the change, like what they made. Like, say, for example, they created a design thumbnail or they facilitated a meeting, right? That's a contribution. So they can list out what they made on that activity log. So I don't know if, if folks understand um, the activity log. So the question I have is, and maybe um, if people have um, feedback or um, any ideas on how we can facilitate this work better are uh, for chaos working groups. Are there things that people can work on? I know we were revising metrics one time, but I don't think, I think we are done with that work now. So on the different working groups, are there things that people can work on on those different working groups? So, uh, yeah, I yes. think we probably have to ask the working groups maybe this week to what if we identified issues? Haven't we done this in the past where we identified Hacktoberfest issues? We have. We have done that in the past. Uh, they would get a tag Hacktoberfest mm -hmm. um, typically. So there's there's really nothing to keep any of the repos from creating those kinds of issues. Yeah, so I would. Uh, oh, you just have to service them. I would. I would add that we haven't had great. We haven't had great success with Hectoberfest in the past, uh, but we have. Uh, for at least a couple of years, we were pretty active in trying to uh, encourage it. I think the, the last year, I don't think we did anything because of our. I think, the, I think we were a little disappointed in in the way Hectoberfest was going for us. Yeah, we would get a lot of typo fixes. Yeah, which is not bad, but it's not what we're trying to mentor. No. Um, but like our, I mean, at Hacktoberfest, we don't do any mentoring, really, do we? Isn't it? When people open issues um, and it's more than a typo, we do. Yeah. Um, it's been pretty atypical, but I, there's like, are you thinking, Ruth, that we would, um, if we tag things as Hacktoberfest, then we could point people to the whole chaos organization as a place to find Hacktoberfest issues? Um, so uh, what I'm thinking is like having like these issues that are not just typo fixes, but like um, quality issues and, you know, tag them with the Hacktoberfest label and, you know, ex community members can find them. I think other people can find them as well because they really use the Hacktoberfest label. It's where you search it, a lot of um, issues come up. So I think both ways for is like community members or Chaos Africa members to find those issues as well. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you. So I think, I mean, it would, it could be helpful if people want to flag issues as Hacktoberfest related is what I'm hearing. Yeah, and then Ruth, is it, would it help to when somebody makes a PR in that PR, they link it to the issue? Yeah, um, I think we can, I can make like a PR template. So there's this thing where you put like, if you hashtag the issue number, mm -hmm. it links back to that issue. So Would I that can- help with tracking? It, yeah. And why, why do you want to track why would I don't think I only reason I ask is because in the past I don't think we have necessarily tracked who contributes for Hacktoberfest. I think it's the responsibility of the participant to uh, it's not even the responsibility of the participant. Basically, uh, GitHub is in in on the, the partnership with Hacktoberfest. So okay. if you uh, if you sign up to do uh, Hacktoberfest mm -hmm. and you make any uh 
commits on GitHub. They basically cool. they grab them and they count them. So like a dashboard where you can yeah. kind of see any registered people. Okay. Yeah. So I I'm just like tracking things mainly so to keep things organized. So oh. I know where to help people if I they see. are like on issues. Yeah. Okay. In the past, it's been like heck. The hashtag on the issues or the tags have been like Hacktoberfest twenty two or twenty twenty two. I'm looking to see if they have a flag on here. I'm pretty sure they do have a an official tag, but I think I think it's just Hacktoberfest. I don't, I don't yeah. know that it's even it twenty two. Okay, yeah. so just Hacktoberfest right on. So I know they uh Hacktoberfest themselves will actually sometimes compile a list of projects that want uh contributions and so they, they do try to they are trying to funnel people to these places where these tags exist. Who is Hacktoberfest? Is it <laughs> Digital Ocean <laughs> and GitHub and a okay. couple other people? Okay. So Digital Ocean has been around longer than GitHub. So probably started okay. With yeah, Digital Digital Ocean is number one, but it, it is it is a partnership between like three or four organizations, okay. I believe. I think too with that activity log, I think Ruth Ruth was also saying like for things like design that don't like have a place to live on GitHub, that mm -hmm. having an activity log gives them a place to put that PR gotcha. so that they do get credit for the contribution, even though there's no code involved. So Okay. Uh, oh, so the would the activity log be a PR, like a, a document? Yes. I see. Oh, okay. they would submit a PR for the thing that they did. I'm sorry. Just like yes, adding I get that it. line. And we would and say, then, yes, we agree. You made a really awesome logo. Yes. yes. I got gotcha. you. Merge that PR merge and then get added to the yeah, list. That's a great idea. Okay. Sorry, I didn't follow that. Is that right, Ruth? <laughs> I should say. Is that right? That's yeah. what you were thinking. <laughs> yeah, it is. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Um, I mean, maybe then. It would probably make sense to put that somewhere in the community repo. It seemed to make the most sense to me. Yeah, um, but I think something like something done on the budget in org, maybe we can have one as well. Or the... or yeah, yeah, I suppose too. You could have you could maybe just make a couple of the files. Cause I would hate to miss if somebody's doing something around the Slack bot. Mm-hmm um like that type of contribution that's not a code contribution oh. so okay no that's a great idea okay any other questions or comments about hacktoberfest <laughs> Thank you, Ruth, for putting all that together. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Ruth is like a superwoman. I swear, <laughs> she's she's like awesome. I love you, Ruth. Thank you. Yeah, there is something I wanted to reiterate on uh, Ruth's submission. Um, more so regards regarding um the contribution to the budging board. Um, sorry, the project board that she showed. Um, well, it's not limited to only chaos Africa, but um, it could be a pointing, um, it could be a pointer to all those who may join in the community who are looking for a project they can jump on really quick and it's not so yet so robust and um, they want to just get their hands dirty on um, technical contributions or it's um, something that is open to the whole community. But of course, um, folks from chaos Africa are doing um I'm more interested I think that's why um it's it looks like it's a chaos Africa thing but well it's um for the whole community yes that's a good point thank you Enoch for bringing that up that's a good point but it is open to everybody Okay, any final things on Hacktoberfest, Chaos Africa, any of that? Okay, all right. So the next thing on is just a reminder that we are um, on October 5th for newcomers to Chaos. 
And we're going to do this once a month. Ruth and I will. Uh, it's just going to be more of like a presentation format as opposed to office hours that are just open, chill, hanging out time. Um, it will be more of a, a presentation of here's what chaos is about. Here's how you can get involved. Here's how you use our metrics. Um, and then there will be a little time for Q&A at the end. So highly recommend joining that. Yeah, that harvester is getting really loud now. Sorry. Oh, um, right. It's harvest okay. season. What time is it? <laughs> it is, right? Sorry? What time, what time is the session on? <coughs> what time is the um, session? That is an excellent question. Excellent question. Let me look really quick. It is at 11 a.m. Uh, Central, U.S. Central, Chicago time. Okay. All right. So, yeah, highly recommend popping in to say hi. Um, this is the next one on here is just an announcement for those who are going to be in the area or want to um, register for this event. Uh, Don, Sean, and Daniel are giving a talk on chaos and OSPOs, and um, the to do group is also quite involved in this. So, um, Don, I don't know if you want to say anything else about this event or Sean. Yeah, it's something that's been kind of driven by the to do group, but the idea that we wanted to have sort of informal um, sessions in other places. There's also going to be one in Amsterdam, I think, in a few months, maybe the beginning of the year. January, uh, I think. Yeah. January, yeah, I think that's about right. But the idea is to hold these uh, meetings in a couple of couple of different locations, starting with Europe and maybe expanding from there, um, with the idea that these were kind of geared towards people working in working in OSPOs, people working on, so it's kind of a joint project between to-do group, chaos, open SSF, and a few other organizations, open chain, I think is another one. So we're we're gonna get together at the Ericsson office in in Stockholm and we're gonna talk about metrics and a bunch of other stuff. So if people want to join us, you're welcome. That's it. That's all I have. I don't know if Sean wants to add anything. No, I think you covered it very nicely, Don. Thank you. Great. Uh oh. That is a nice segue into the To Do Associate program. So I can speak to that. Uh, I just wanted to. Leave wanted to let you know that um, we've been talking about a uh, partnership with the To-Do Associates program, and we've been talking with Anna uh, at the To-Do group, as well as members who are part of chaos and part of To-Do or only part of To-Do as to what this type of partnership or this associates program could look like. Um, it was more than just you know a logo exchange, I like that term. You know, but actually recognizing the work and participating together uh, around OSPO related work. Um, and so the proposals, the I think the associates program is moving forward, or at least our, our application for it is moving forward positively. Everybody I've talked to in the chaos project and in the to do group is really positive about this <laughs> about this effort. So that's really great. Yeah. Um, is also seen like what Don was talking about with the, the thing going on in Stockholm. Like there's clearly a, a point of connection and a desire to work together. So one of the things that we had talked about even before the associates program conversation came up was in the value working group. And Vinod, I don't know if you're on right now. Um, yes, kind of I am. Okay. Remember kind of reframing the value working group around uh, specifically around OSPO related work whether that's uh, for-profit firms, whether that's scientific, whether that's academic, you know, it, it could go a variety of different ways with OSPOs because there's a lot of work there, but we had talked about this. So right now, one of the, the potentials is to kind of rework the value working group around OSPOs very deliberately. Um, so I don't know if people have comments on that. We'd probably require a rename, just call it like OSPO working group or something like that. To be very explicit, um, Ospocotics. Ospocotics. <laughs> we could do that too. 
So Vinod, this would require kind of a rework, you know, of the README just to kind of define what the goals of the group are. I think a lot of the stuff we have in the value working group, the kind of the assets that are there are still potentially really valuable. Um, but in an effort to to create this connection with the to do group, it might make it a little bit more sense to yeah. rename working group as to something that's a little bit more recognizable. Yes. So I have one thought on this, like uh, when I saw this in the agenda, I was thinking, like, we have academic aspect of that, and that is also aligned with the OSPO mm -hmm. part uh, from the, as uh, Jacob is uh, uh, participating in that. So I was thinking, how should we cover that? Uh, is it like in alignment with the OSPO or it's just academic? Because we have a little more broader version also. Yeah. So that that did come up in the conversation. I think that's something we're just going to have to sort out over time. Okay. Just in terms of the variety of different kinds of OSPOs. Right. The way that a, a university OSPO functions is different. Quite different okay. than the way a for-profit organization OSPO functions. Um, and so I think we do have to sort that out and time might just be our friend in sorting that out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the proposal, not around renaming the value working group, but a, a proposal, I'm going to get it in today, um, is for Ospology, not live. Well, it will be live, but it's not in Sweden. Uh, it would just be next, uh, the October 5th. Is that already next Wednesday? It is. Jeez. All right. So it's like next I'm Wednesday. Flying. Yeah. And the panel session would be uh, Sean and Don and Daniel. Hey, that's a... And uh, <laughs> uh, there was one other person from RIT as well. And then Anna and I would just moderate the session. So just for all of you, like Don and Sean, I'll put together a working document that we can kind of speak to with maybe a couple of prompt questions. I don't think, I've never been to one of the sessions. I'm guessing they're an hour. Is that correct? So yeah. Okay. And so we, because we do have a lot of people on there, I'll try to really keep it short and concise and really just sometimes direct a question to one or two people on the entire panel because if all four of you answer that that'll be one question and that's the end of that so maybe two questions so anyway i'll share a document with all of you um, and i'll again get this submitted and then do, do you all want a calendar invite for this for me just so it's a holder for you yeah that's always helpful for me Don and Sean, just I can send you a calendar invite just so it's blocked on your on your calendar. Okay. Um, so that's it. That's it for me on the associates program. Moving forward, really very positively, I think. So with that, anybody I have questions? Yeah, uh, with that, I anticipate more. Uh, participation from OSPO people coming to the value group or it's just we it's, are going to them no it's the the first one the intention is to have um members of the to-do group or people interested in the efforts of the to-do group to join this session and talk about metrics that are metrics and metrics models that are relevant to open source program offices yeah so it may take then. us a little. It may take us a little time to get some of those mm -hmm. people from OSPOs really engaged. So, if you could, maybe I don't go to the value working group, but I I am active in to do. So I'm I'm happy if you're not getting the kind of engagement that we're looking for. That we can we can do some more outreach within the within the to do group to to see if we can get some participation. So let's let's just keep chatting about it and see see how it goes. Yes, yeah, this is uh, that was what I was hoping for because I, I see a very less participation from OSPO side in the value working group. So, with this uh, association, I'm anticipating more participation that will help us to do that. Yep, yeah, I really like this change. I think it, it really helps kind of define the focus of that group. Uh, so, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this. Uh, Helps moving forward. Uh, I would also suggest maybe uh, uh, a name change for the group. Uh, I suggested this OSPO working group. Sounds good. <laughs> I like very, it. <laughs> it is what it is. 
Yeah, for sure. I think value would would go away. Uh, we do also will, get work of the value will people. remain, but the branding will be a little new. The brand, yes, exactly. We do also get a few um, people that filter in that are just from their own OSPO that are looking for information on metrics and a way to connect with us. So I think it's perfect to have a place to send them that's specific to their needs instead of kind of trying to shove everything about chaos at them, <laughs> have them sort it out. So I really like that a lot too. So Vinod, just so you know too, um, Anna and I are, she's, she has uh, forked the readme and she's gonna start kind of just working on some of the text. And so she and I will work on that and I can include you in that as well, just so you see some of the changes. Yeah. And if you need any help, like I'll be happy to uh, work on that. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, we have six minutes left. Is there anything we want to talk about in these last six minutes? <coughs> Matt, who just I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Don't want to be good. good. <laughs> it's all good. I, <clears throat> hey, Georgia. I joined late. Was there anything? Thank you. Uh, from the um, comms working group that you were waiting for me on? Uh, no, I mean, we talked about it. We take a, we say, we, say, uh, we took a look at the document and Elizabeth kind of walked us through where, um, kind of where the document is and maybe what some of the core components of the document are. So we did talk about it for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and it, I think the this next step is to just kind of clean up and finalize the document is what it felt like. Yeah. Um, so no, we did talk about it and it's looking really good and everybody's really happy and <laughs> definitely believes we need this effort. Awesome. Thanks for the update. Georg, did you did you want to set a meeting or or anything to like kick it off or like what do you want to do next with it? I want to clean it up. Um, there were some more feedback uh, and edits that came in this week. And then uh, right now I want to keep the conversations in this meeting. Um, once we have the cleaned up version and we're ready to, I don't know, ratify it or approve it yeah. or start working, then we can set up uh, um, separate meetings after we build the team or, or have the team that wants to work on this. And I think, Gary, the part that you maybe missed at the beginning is I think we're all pretty good with the document in its current state. And so the cleanup can just be like accepting edits and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, I did a pass last week doing that and then there were more edits. So yeah, I think it's yeah. coming along nicely. Yep. That was kind of the consensus I feel. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. So I'll add it to next week's, um, I'll add it to next week's community agenda for one more round. Is that Make sense? Is that good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Right, any final thoughts before we close our meeting out? Going once, twice? Once, twice, yeah. No? All right. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thanks again for coming to our meeting today and showing up. Thanks, we love well. you. Bye. See you later. Bye.